Hello. Today I'm backstage at the Reading Hexagon for another Brian Cox warm up, which has given me a little bit of time to go to what is normally one of uh, my favourite Oxfam bookshops, which is the one in Reading. And uh, I haven't overdone it because I'm also back here next Thursday uh, to do a slapstick festival gig with uh, Joe Brand and Arthur Smith and Pippa Evans and Jack D. So it's been quite, I've deliberately been a little bit light. Um, started off uh, with this uh, Umberto Eco, Inventing the Enemy. He's always a brilliant essayist and, uh, and worth reading and uh, these are much shorter than the novels as well because I'm not very good at long novels I get my brain uh, is too flibbity gibber and uh, I have to keep going well hang on who was that character that was ages ago so these are perfect for it when it comes to just going I still like reading Umberto Eco but the, uh, one day I'll read Foucault's Pendulum I will one day I will. Uh, so I got that. Then I got this little book, uh, Ludwig Wittgenstein, uh, a memoir. Um, I love reading about him. Uh, again, someone I don't necessarily, you know, understand uh, all their work, uh, but I find a fascinating character. He's in that group of characters who, uh, like Niels Bohr as well, that when he wanted to try and relax from his academic work, would go and watch cowboy movies. And I really do want. I, I want to write a play. Well, actually, I want someone else to write a play, but Terry Johnson's not interested, so that's not a very good start. Um, which is all about Ludwig Wittgenstein and uh, the quantum physicist Niels Bohr uh, going to see maybe a Randolph Scott double bill or maybe one Randolph Scott film and one Gary Cooper film, something like that, or even just a couple of Hopalong Cassidy's. And uh, after the movie, when they're walking out the cinema, they have a furious row all about uh, quick draw and how it were because Niels Bohr actually worked on, uh, as well as doing all his very, very important work on uh, on the nature of physics, uh, he also was fascinated in why quite often the first person to draw uh, actually got shot by the other person and he kind of did a little bit of work. Uh, uh, so that was his other work when he wasn't dealing with the nature of the very, very small. So anyway, it'd be a play about uh, Ludwig Wittgenstein and Niels Bohr. If you want to write that for me, that would be very nice of you. Um, now I've got this on further reflection, 60 years of writing, Jonathan Miller, various things in there, including from uh, his famous TV series Body in Question and various stuff that he wrote for uh, catalogues for art exhibitions and for magazines. So I thought that was £2.99, very well spent. Um, philosophy Today, you might know I, t I buy philosophy books believing the full intention that I'm going to read them and uh, sometimes even believing I'm going to understand them. And uh, this is uh, Philosophy Today, number three, and I mainly got this because so I think it's got an essay in which I might have somewhere else already, uh, but it's uh, what is phenomenology, um, and as you know, the realization is that I would never be able to be uh, a philosopher because whenever I say phenomenology, I always then hear do 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 phenomenology. It just and you know it doesn't scan well. It's not necessarily that linked to the Muppets in many ways. But nevertheless, that happens in my mind, and that is why I am a very facile character. But anyway, this uh, I want to read more Merleau-Ponty just because of Sarah Bakewell's brilliant book uh, in the Philosopher's Cafe. Uh, that is what it's called, isn't it? Um, which is a fantastic book about um, existentialism. It's, it's, it's brilliant. I should know what it's called. I've, I've read it three times now. Um, then I've got a book of uh, postcards, uh, Francis Bacon. Um, not all of them. Uh, I think, yeah, there's quite a few of them are missing, but it's, it's enough to get started. It's always nice to have a few spare Francis Bacon, you know, postcards for, for writing notes and things like that. Still never, never quite certain about Francis Bacon. Again, someone I like reading about. And, and I almost love, if love, if, if that's the right thing. Still one of my favourite lines of all time uh, was uh, Desmond Morris, I think, quoting, uh, he, he interviewed Francis Bacon, De Desmond Morris, um, who for many of us is best known for things like The Human Zoo and The Naked Ape. It was only when I went around an art exhibition in uh, Edinburgh at the, the Museum of Modern Art there that I found out that uh, Desmond Morris actually started as a, a very young surrealist, quite of, of, of some renown in the 1940s. And uh, anyway, he, I think, interviewed Francis Bacon and Francis Bacon at one point said, the problem is that I've, I've, I've got the scream, but I can't get the smile. And uh, I think that is fair to say that may well have, have remained from, and, and of course also there, that picture there, the Pope picture, uh, entertainingly spoofed um, by Stuart Lee in his uh, first with Kevin Eldon playing the part of the Pope, as far as I remember. The final book I bought was uh, this, The Red Shoes, Margaret Atwood starting out. And uh, that's because it's about two things that uh, interest me. One is Margaret Atwood, and uh, it's also connected to The Red Shoes, which is, uh, amongst other things, one of my favourite Powell and Pressburger movies, an absolute masterpiece, and uh, a beautiful melodramatic tragedy, just wonderful. So those 
books were what I bought at the Oxfam in Reading. And don't forget that I am actually, when I'm doing my book tour, which I think is now 109 dates um, between the 7th of October and the 16th of December, um, is uh, I will be playing the Oxfam in Exeter on the 13th of October. I'm doing the Sidmouth Science Festival in the afternoon and then in the evening I'm going to go up to Exeter and go to the Exeter uh, Oxfam. And, uh, and they've got a little lectern there and all manner of things and I'm going to do a little thing with them. And uh, obviously I, I think they're selling tickets and any, uh, any ticket money will obviously go to Oxfam and not to me. Bye bye bibliophiles. <laughs>